All right, good morning, everybody. Come on, good morning. So, <clears throat> those of you that have been to this breakfast for the last 14 years uh, know that it usually pours rain. So I had a phone call yesterday. It's not raining, but it's 25 degrees outside today. So we're, I think, getting it right as we move forward here. <clears throat> I have a voice that is on its edge. I screamed like a six-year-old at the 49ers game this weekend. And, yeah. And to make that even better, we've got an incredible speaker here that I screamed even louder at the World Series at. So there you go. I, I was getting there. Don't worry. We've got an incredible program today. Uh, my name's Michael Alt. I've been the executive director of the Downtown Partnership, believe it or not, for 15 years. Um, you know, this organization, when we really look back to the creation of the partnership, we really talked about the need to create a voice for the urban core, work with the development community, work with some of our partners and property owners to really make downtown a special place. And I think in looking back, uh, I think that this organization really has taken some real value in the partnerships that we've had with most of you. One of the things I do want to say is we have uh, uh, this event in January every year because we really think it sets the stage for the year and we think it's our way really to look forward and challenge not just the development and business community but the property owners down here uh, to keep pushing to make uh, a strong urban center. This event would not happen without our sponsors so I'm going to read through uh, some of our sponsors. We have, we have five pre presenting sponsors this year. CB Richard Ellis, Westfield Downtown Plaza, f and Bank, Jones Lang LaSalle, and the University of Sacramento, their Sacramento campus. Let's give them a round of applause. We also have two supporting sponsors in Dudek and SMUD, and a media sponsor and partner in Comstocks Magazine. Let's thank them. We have, uh, we have a variety of key partners that we work with throughout the year, not just the city of Sacramento with our partnership, but our board members really lead the way for us. Uh, and they spend a lot of time being a board member with the Downtown Partnership in addition to getting to spend a lot of time with me is not all love and joy, but it is a lot of work. And these board members work very hard. They are very strategic in the economic agenda that we have. And I'd like to really ask them, I think we've got most of them here to just stand up and be recognized for their efforts. If we could have the Downtown Partnership Board stand up, please. I've got staff uh, reminding me that we can follow today's conversation on Twitter, hashtag SOD. So if you have that ability, please join us uh, in that effort. Uh, I do want to, we've got a lot of elected officials here, and this is a little bit dangerous if I miss anybody, but my effort is to, to make sure I've got everybody here. If you're not, I love you just the same. Uh, the, uh, from the city of Sacramento, and if, if you could let me get through these, uh, I think uh, we could uh, give everybody a, a round of applause at the end. From the city of Sacramento, Mayor Kevin Johnson, City Council Member Sandy Sheedy, Steve Cohn, Jay Chenier, Kevin McCarty, Daryl Fong, Bonnie Pinnell, and I do want to give uh, an acknowledgement to Council Member Rob Fong, who's going to be transitioning off uh, the council this year. He's been a, a true leader for downtown uh, in the time that he's been here and a good partner. So let's acknowledge them, please. Thank you. Uh, from the County of Sacramento, Supervisors Phil Cerna, Jimmy Yee, Are you clapping for yourself, uh, Jimmy Yee, and Roberta McGlashan. From the state of California, Senator Daryl Steinberg and Assemblymember Roger Dickinson. From the U.S. Senate and Congressional Representatives, we've got Nathan Dietrich with uh, Doris Matsui's office and Brandon Ida with Barbara Boxer's office. Let's thank them. Uh, and also some of our key partners with SMUD. Uh, we've got SMUD board member Genevieve Sharoma. Uh, and a few other partners, um, the police chief, Rick Brazil, fire chief, Ray Jones, and our city manager, John Shirey. Let's thank them. <laughs> uh, 
So my staff said I mistakenly said University of Sacramento. It's the University of San Francisco Sacramento campus. So let's give them extra love. You get it twice. We've got, uh, we've got an incredible program today with uh, Larry Bear. Um, one of the things that we have talked about is the importance of an entertainment and sports complex downtown. And when we look across to San Francisco and what they've done uh, in AT&T Park, what they've done in the neighborhood surrounding AT&T Park, I think it has truly been transformative. Uh, Jason Goff and I went down uh, for uh, Jason Goff with Jones Lang Asala property owner went down before Christmas to meet with uh, Larry Bear and Stacy Slaughter in San Francisco to talk about what this facility not only has meant to the neighborhood but what they are doing to truly be a partner with the business community and you know we realize uh, an event that has you know three million users a year event that a uh, facility excuse me that has three million users a year a facility that has 200 plus event nights can do nothing but positive things for us uh, in the downtown area and we feel very strongly that the downtown community and this region needs to do everything they can to make that uh, project a reality and you're going to hear a lot on that this afternoon. Uh, moving into some programs with uh, the downtown partnership, you know, we realize, <coughs> excuse me, that clean and safe really leads the way for us. And I think when we talk about uh, people's perception in downtown, why they come to the central city, it's more than just a place people work. You know, we've got 10 million square feet of Class A office space in the downtown core and close to 100,000 employees, but they've got to feel good about that experience and they've got to absolutely feel that it's a place after work that they come down to, spend their money, go to restaurants, go to the theater. And so we spend a tremendous amount of time in our organization on our clean and safe programs. We've got 15 community service guides, five maintenance workers that patrol the streets every day, work very closely with law enforcement. Um, and during these last couple of years, uh, uh, with a partnership with Sutter, we have uh, Sutter Medical Center, we absolutely have developed a program that is making a difference. It's called our Navigator Program. It's something that works with the homeless community, many of these social service providers, to really work with those that, uh, that don't have a lot of resources and help them uh, to a better place. Uh, this last uh, year, we track about 20 uh, individuals a month and uh, at the end of the year we were able to transition 66 percent of those into permanent housing off the street and I think that that's a great testament to the work of the staff so I want to acknowledge their efforts. You know it's uh, many of you that know the partnership and know the organization throughout the years know Clean and Safe and especially those organizations have have been uh, I think really the guiding principles of what we're about. Property owners in 1996, when we started the partnership, said clean and safe has to be the foundation. Before we're going to truly be effective in economic development and retail recruitment, we've got to make downtown look better, feel better, and people feel better about that experience. And so we had a gentleman that worked with us for 14 years, Ryan Loofborough, who left the partnership, and it was really our challenge to bring somebody on board to really take the program to the next level. Uh, I do want to introduce our new director of our community services, Dion Dwyer. Uh, many of you will know Dion from his years at uh, the Metro Chamber, but I think uh, Dion has really taken not only this opportunity, but this challenge really to dive in to the relationships we have, not only with law enforcement, but with our social service providers, working with, uh, with our staff to not only empower and mentor them, but really to have them realize they are the eyes and ears uh, of downtown. And I think it goes without saying, we would not be successful without the partnerships with law enforcement. And specifically, uh, Police Chief Rick Brazil, uh, our captain for downtown right now, Ken Bernard, uh, Lieutenant Bill Champion, and our Bike Sergeant Dave Valdez, along with our Community Prosecutor Susan Nelson, absolutely know their stuff and they do a great job in partnering with us, so thank you. You know, we made, uh, we made a commitment downtown uh, at the partnership to get more engaged in retail recruitment. And, you know, one of the things that we realized is that if we weren't going to be involved and just wait for deals to come, uh, come to us, that we were going to be left behind. And so we put in place, in working with uh, Leslie Fritchie and her staff at the city's downtown department, a program, a retail recruitment program. We hired a woman by the name of Valerie Werder that not just is a connection between property owners, but somebody that we really wanted to be 
a partner with them, to understand lease terms, to understand what deals were available, to really build relationships uh, and many times be an advocate for property owners that didn't have them. Uh, didn't have them. And, and, you know, a lot of us that are engaged in the day-to-day -day politics and processes of the city, I think, take for granted sometimes how difficult that can be to navigate uh, some of those avenues to either expanding your businesses or staying. And, you know, we found uh, when, in moving into it with Valerie that it wasn't just about retail recruitment and bringing new businesses in, but what were we doing to retain businesses, keep them here? Businesses that were already located here, how do we get you to open a new business and stay downtown? And so, you know, as much as we can continue to be a champion, work with the brokerage community has been incredibly uh, supportive of us, uh, and I think see us as a resource and something that I know Valerie and the partnership are continue uh, continue that commitment during this next year. We saw 40 new businesses open their doors and sign leases uh, in 2011, and I think uh, the the partnership with Valerie's efforts uh, worked uh, on about two thirds of those and played a role in that effort. So I think. Um, it's something we definitely are going to continue. You know, <clears throat> when, uh, when we look back at long-term priorities for the partnership, I think, uh, you know, at least even on my, on my annual review every year, it's Greyhound, 700 block of K Street, cars on K. These things all have been key priorities, and I think we have made tremendous progress. And I was doing a media interview this morning, and one of the things that was said is, does some of these, do some of these projects lead the way towards next year? And I think absolutely. And I think when we look at why people are choosing to come downtown, our efforts right now in walking tours with prospective tenants, with brokers, uh, with investors, has never been more significant now than it has been in the past. You know, we saw, uh, like I said, the relocation of the Greyhound, the renovation of the Maidstone uh, apartment buildings at 15th and J Street. Uh, that brings in some moderate housing. And I think, you know, we can all talk about uh, the need for high-end quality housing, uh, but moderate housing gives an opportunity for people that workforce that lives here. It's great to be able to have some of our staff live downtown, walk to work, and we have a, a, a good portion of our staff that don't have cars, don't have cars, walk to work, take public transit, and the, as much as we can do to continue to, to, build, to build housing in the urban core, I think is a great thing for us, and we'll do everything we can. Uh, the project, uh, uh, the Maidstone project, uh, was done by DNS Development, uh, who was also partnering with CFY to do the 700 block of K Street, a mixed-use development project that really is going to change the western end of the K Street Mall. Uh, <clears throat> after 42 years, we saw cars open on K Street, a light rail station at 8th and H. Uh, sports basement, an incredible, uh, an incredible opportunity is coming to town to open a, uh, a key store uh, on I Street, uh, 7th and I. Uh, and uh, I think tomorrow or Thursday, the 16th and O Stitch groundbreaking project. And so there's a tremendous amount of activity downtown and something that we are continuing to not only promote but take opportunities to work with uh, the brokers and potential retailers downtown to make that happen. Uh, our uh, policy issues downtown, uh, you know, we've got a policy manager in Kevin Green that uh, spends a lot of time working with some of our partner and neighbor organizations. We do a lot of work with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. I do want to acknowledge uh, and welcome uh, Roger Nilo uh, with the Metro Chamber. Uh, the Chamber also is a key partner with us. And Martha Lofgren, I know you're out here. You, uh, during your time at the Chamber, were a great partner and I think carried that organization uh, through the transition and do want to thank you for that support. So.